Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render caustics with RenderMan. Uh, basically, caustics are the conversions of photons uh, to highlight a point on a surface. So basically, if you think about like a magnifying glass, light coming through the magnifying glass and um, creating a specular or a, a highlight um, on the surface of wherever light's coming through and connecting with. Um, and to do that, we need to change a couple of things from our default setup. Um, first of all, I've just got a scene here where I've created a wall and just signed the default Pixar surface shader to it. I'm also going to create a, a tube. And I'm just going to make some adjustments to that. All right, so all I've done here is just um, change the width of the outside, um, some of the uh, edge loops, just so we've got some pieces of this that have got thicker walls and thinner walls. So we're going to be transforming this into a glass object. So the first thing we're going to do is select it and assign a Pixar surface shade to it. We'll go into the Hypershade Editor, and this is Pixar Surface 2, which we'll rename to Pixar Glass. We're going to reduce the gain on the diffuse channel to zero, and then we're going to go down to the glass lobe just there and increase the refraction gain and the reflection gain to 1.0, roughness down to zero, and refractive index to 1.33. The refractive index for glass is 1.33 uh, most of the time. Everything else will stay as defaults, and we can pretty much leave that alone for now. Um, and we'll just set up a light here quickly and we're just going to take a render to see what this looks like. I'm going to pull the camera out kind of far uh, because caustics take a long time to render and I don't want to be here all day. Uh, and I'm just going to reduce the scale of that light to 0.5. Alright, let's just take a, an IPR and this is just with the RenderMan defaults. Uh, I'm just going to increase the value of that light to be like, I don't know, call it 100. And exposure to that should be good enough okay so here in the render you'll see that it looks like glass and um, the light is passing through our object onto the wall behind and it's creating some shadows where the light's been bent away from the wall however we're not actually sending caustic highlights here as you'd expect to see where the light is sort of being magnified um, sort of around these areas here probably around there as well so we'll keep that one, but um, we're going to make some adjustments to our scene. So the first thing we need to do is uh, change our integrator. Um, I can actually show you one other thing though. You can actually use caustics with the Pixar uh, Path Tracer integrator by allowing caustics. And this isn't generally recommended. The, the results you get aren't very good, basically. <laughs> Um, and it's not really designed to work as well with caustics. Um, it can be a means to an end in some situations, but I think generally you can be better off using the VCM integrator, which is what we'll do now. So we can switch that to PXR VCM, and we're going to have connect paths and merge paths on. We're going to leave everything else as the default. We'll come back and change a couple of things in a second. We'll just have a look at what the render looks like now. Actually, before we do that, we need to remember uh, one of the most important things is that the light actually has to be emitting caustic photons. So to do that, we're going to go into the um, light attributes and under the advanced tab, we want to trace light paths. And I'm actually going to normalize that as well, just in case I change the size of it. And we'll run the IPR and you'll get something that looks like this. Now, this obviously looks a lot worse than our previous render um, or even our base render. What you're noticing is that the light isn't actually getting to travel all the way through the glass like it sort of is here. And that's because we haven't allowed our um, uh, diffuse depth to be high enough. So essentially it's not the light, the light path is being um, eliminated after one or two transmissions through the um, glass. So we're going to increase the diffuse depth to four. And we'll leave everything else at the same. And then we'll just have another look here and see what's happening. And already you can see that it's made a huge difference. So we can see that 
The glass surface is ref uh, reflecting caustic photons onto the ground around in these nice swirly circles, as well as transmitting caustic photons through the glass, uh, through all four of those planes, uh, onto the wall behind. And it's, um, it's got a little bit of fall off there on the top and the bottom as well. This actually is a little bit easier to see if you enable temperature. We'll just make that like really blue. Um, can be kind of useful obviously this is going to look really blue now but uh, particularly for YouTube uh, because it compresses the video it might be a little bit easier to see these highlights here and then the way it's falling away into this sort of bluer color here so when you use a temperature other than just basically white you're going to see that f um, the highlights as white and then it transitioned to a more saturated blue as you can see there and you can sort of see that um, reflect uh, the reflected caustics there on the top and on out the side as well as around as well as around the bottom there is uh, on the floor now we can improve this a little bit by increasing our max specular depth and max diffuse depth so at that render we were at four let's increase it to eight now this will allow the light to bounce around inside the tube a bit more so if you have a more complex piece of geometry um, you will get a more realistic result uh, by increasing this. However, um, what you'll notice is that your render times will go up. So as you can see there, it's a little bit more basic. The other resulting factor is that you will get a lot lighter render basically. So you can see this does actually look a lot better. This could be passable. It depends on what your situation is though. At this point, you might be thinking, Michael, this render is incredibly noisy and we've already been rendering up to like 128 samples. Uh, you'd be correct in thinking that. Caustics are incredibly noisy to render and slow to render. So you want to use them sparingly and you want to possibly use them, um, apply them in as a composited pass where possible. You also probably want to use denoising. I have a separate tutorial on denoising, so make sure you check that out um, where possible. But uh, it is a good effect and in next week's tutorial we'll get a little bit further into um, how to use them in a scene uh, we'll just finally go through a couple more settings so like I was saying um, that was just an IPA that's going to go up to 64 samples doesn't look terrible for 64 samples but you know it could look better obviously you might end up going higher than 512 1024 or 2048 or something like that um, vertex merging is uh, one of the other more important things that you need to be aware of. Essentially, what's going to happen is these little dots that you see here are going to be sort of blurred and merged together. And this is calculated in screen space, not in world space. So it's going to look at the scene uh, in the render and it's going to say these two highlights look close together. I'll try and bl blur and merge those together. So if I increase this uh, to a really high radius of like 15, and run the IPR again, you'll see that it has some adverse effects. So hopefully this comes up uh, in spite of YouTube's compression, but the wall here is getting sort of all spotty and blurry, um, and the render itself is actually becoming a lot longer to render, um, and you can see there's a lot more fireflies happening. So you don't want to push that level too high, um, and inversely, you don't want to go necessarily too low, so if let's uh, decrease it to one, because on too low a merge radius, you get um, a just basically really noisy highlights as you can see compared to that. Now obviously this, this hair isn't rendered up the whole way and if you use denoising it might take care of the problem, but um, you can see all the way out here, um, it's getting quite noisy and it's not really being sampled down enough but it will depend on what your sample um, your sample rate is at the end um, of your render. So at a lower sample rate, obviously it's going to be uh, pretty bad at 64 samples. So if I went up to something like 1024, it'd probably be okay-ish. Um, but still, you probably want to keep that merge radius. I've found generally sort of about above 2.5 um, to 5 is fine. It will depend on your shot, obviously. Like I said, it's screen space based. It's not world space. So those those uh, little highlights, those little white dots, um, it's the distance that you see on the actual printed image rather than the distance in world space. Now, caustics can be used for some really nice effects like um, caustic reflections of water, 
Um, if you've watched the most recent Blade Runner and you like reflections of water, or even the original Blade Runner, um, that's those those caustic highlights from the water off the surface onto the walls. You can get that sort of effect. But bear in mind, this is going to be costly on your render time. So you want to use this effect um, sparingly. Uh, and it can also add that sort of je ne sais quoi to any render that you do of glass. It is worth having a look at, but again, if you don't really care about the caustics, if the scene is too light to be able to see the caustic um, refraction or reflection on the surface that you're rendering, then don't bother. Um, it's just going to it's going to slow down your render times um, a whole lot, and you might not actually get any uh, benefit that the audience will notice at the very end. That is pretty much the overview of using caustics. Um, we will, like I said, uh, use caustics in next week's tutorial. Uh, we'll begin, we're going to do a little underwater scene. So make sure you're subscribed uh, if you haven't already to check that one out. And um, if you did like the video, make sure you drop a like on it so other people can find it as well. Uh, if you want to see more of my work, I've got links in the description to that. Other than that, that's, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.